What's up, New York? Hey. Oh. Over on the corner, you know him as Wayne Jenkins. You know him as Harling Mayo. You know him as Chris Ryan. The one, the only, the first Midnight Boy, Van Lathan. The king of Staten Island, <laughs> Sean Fennessy. Hi. So we're doing rounders for the rewatchables. You guys agree with this choice? We want to do a New York movie. What do we bat around for New York movies? I think rounders was always the number one draft pick. It's the one that we said we could actually do, like I have notes, without notes. Like just do it blind. Yeah. Could we just do blind rounders? But we got to watch rounders like three or four times over the last couple of weeks, which is the most rewarding thing I've done with my time. <laughs> Sean, this movie changed your life. Yeah, but you don't want to tell them you were going to do Taxi Driver solo just by yourself? <laughs> <laughs> Swearing a brown jacket? Um, yeah, we batted around. We knew Van was going to be here. Van, you wanted this. This was you. I, I, I wanted to do Avengers, but... It, 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 no, I desperately wanted to do this movie. It, it's like one of those movies that, like, during my formative movie-watching years, I watched over and over and over and over again. So it's dope to be talking about it with you guys. So in the 90s, there was this slow burn movie phenomenon where sometimes a movie would come out and it wouldn't hit right away. And then something happened and then it would hit. And it happened with Swingers. It happened with Days That Confused. It happened with this movie. Does it really, does it happen anymore? Like, I guess it happened with John Wick. That was like nine years ago. But does it, does this still happen? It's not the same. Um, it's Matt Damon who has pointed this out. But DVDs for losers in dorm rooms like me, huge for a movie like this. When did this hit for you, CR? I don't remember the first time I saw this. I just remember it always being on. You know, this was, this was, like Sean said, a DVD movie that you would walk into rooms and either it was on cable or somebody had the DVD going in the house you were living in and you were like, oh, did, did, Wormy, did Worm get the hot dog yet? Can I sit down and watch this? And then you were there for 45 minutes. How about you, Van? Yeah, same thing. It's like, not just DVDs, but linear cable to where the cable would give you a movie. I mean, we got excited over all kinds of crazy movies. Like, yo, my nigga, did you see that Suicide Kings? You know what I mean? Uh, the Boondock Saints, like really movies. Y'all like that, right? And so like there was a whole genre of films that meant a lot more to people than they do now. Now it's either the top of the top or it goes to streaming and you don't really hear anything about it. I saw this in the movie theater with my future wife and my roommate Ricky, who <laughs> eventually moved out because he went to live with his girlfriend. So the three and of y'all went to the movie together. We did, three of us, like at 10 o'clock in Somerville, Massachusetts. Who liked and it more, Ricky or your future wife? I think, I think he liked it more, but, but all of us were like, I didn't really understand poker. Was this like a Mike Worm Joe kind of a thing? <laughs> What's weird about going to a movie okay, with a right. roommate and a girlfriend? I'm under attack. Um, so let me just real quick before we move off this. What did you think, we had like a threesome after? I'm, I'm asking, because like, because so you guys went, whose idea was it for Ricky to come? Because that's very... <laughs> Because if it was Ricky's idea, it's like you have to ask whose idea was Ricky it for Ricky? Ricky was my guy. It's like we were in the movies. Come on with us. <laughs> okay. It was the 90s. We were much more uh, forthcoming. It was the 90s. Uh, I liked it. I didn't love it. And I didn't really understand the poker stuff. And then Ricky had this illegal cable box that he got for us from this guy named Big Al. And they used to have all these pay per view channels. And the pay per view would just run 24 hours a day so you could jump in. Whenever. So like four months later, Rounders comes on like two of the pay-per-view channels and I start watching it and I'm hopping in and then within two weeks, I'm like, this is my favorite movie of all time. And that was it. And I've been watching it ever since and it's gaining steam. I, I think you could make a case. I don't know if it's the greatest rewatchable of all time, but it's, it's in the running. Wow. wow. It's in the running. Shit. No, set, well, let me, I'm going to land the plane on this. <laughs> it's 26 years old. I'm still, like, finding stuff and seeing stuff. Like, obviously, The Godfather's probably the best ever, but this one, from the movies of the last 30 years, I think I've watched this the most, other than maybe Almost Famous. Boogie Nights? Boogie Nights. Of the ones that we've done, I mean, I've watched Heat 
probably the most. Well, that's that's yeah. that's 95. So yeah, all right, that's last 30 okay. years, maybe last 26 or whatever. Right. The thing about this one is that also it's like once you've seen this movie four or five times, you start talking differently. Like the vocabulary, it's a vocabulary movie. It's like, Why do you think I am the way that I am? <laughs> <laughs> because of this Because movie. you're from here? Yeah. Uh, no, but like you start talking like Worm. You start talking like Mike. You start talking like Teddy. And like that's only like this, Glenn Gary, Michael Clayton, a bunch of Sorkin movies. But they'll have like an impact on like just even the way you talk. Yeah, you know, you mentioned John Wick earlier. And obviously John Wick kills like 557,000 people in the movie. So that's like very fun to watch. But another thing about John Wick is the fact that the movie exists in this weird, inaccessible universe that you've never seen before. Yeah. And so when I'm first watching this movie, I'm like 19. I'm like, a motherfucker can play poker for 36 hours in a row? <laughs> like, what kind of cocaine they doing out here in Manhattan? And so that thing about the movie, it's like so singularly cool. Yeah. And you re-access that cool every time you watch it. It had this unbelievable cable run because it could run on TNT. They could bleep a few things and it was fine. It could run on HBO. It could run on VHS, DVD. It just, it just kind of kept going and kept going and kept going. Um, you could jump in. How many different spots in this movie can you just jump in and be ready to roll? Any like spot. You can see the beginning, or like, I'm in. You could see when he's, his girlfriend moves out, I'm in. You could see when they're about to, uh, they got to make 15,000 in five days. I'm in. Like, it, it just doesn't matter. If Mike and Joe are having a conversation, I'm out. I'm not sure I want to jump in. All right, fair. <laughs> One of the uh, great opening lines ever. Listen, here's the thing. If you can't spot the sucker in your first half hour at the table, then you are the sucker. I wish somebody had told Isaiah Thomas this when he was the <laughs> Knicks GM. Um, is he here? Starting early. <laughs> Starting early. Uh, also, are people very, booing because of the Knicks? Uh, we, we, he's gone. We're, things yeah, are great the Knicks now. Are great. We did it. Yeah. rocking. Yeah. We did it. Um, Chris, very few movies get you in the mood and make you want to do the thing that the movie is actually about. Yes. You watch this movie and you're like, I just want to play poker for nine hours with random guys who smell. I cannot play poker. I do not understand the rules of poker. Sean can attest we've played poker before. I just start chatting. Like, I'm just like, you guys seen Sports Center earlier? Like, but I love hanging out. And this is one of the great hangout movies of all time. Nobody works, they're just up all night. They do night stuff during the day and day stuff during the night. And it's just an amazing hangout group. Yeah, I mean, I could relate because I know a lot of people that got out of jail. And, <laughs> and, and like, so that was the thing, you know, you got to go get somebody, you visit him a couple of times, and he comes home and you're like, all right, bro, I love you, man. Don't fuck my life up. <laughs> and then they do. And, and so like that, like that thing, feel, I'm being serious though, like feeling that sort of obligation to someone who went away for a little while, you can't explain it to your girl, you know what I'm saying, why the dude named Lil Bobby is taking over your whole life. <laughs> but like what he felt for him, like I get that. Sean, you saw this movie and now as, a, as an adult with a child, you will still drive to Vegas put in headphones and play poker for nine straight hours with a bunch of strangers at a casino. Yeah, I'm going in April. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is the movie that made me want to play cards. Um, and watching it over and over again in college led to degenerate card games till five o'clock in the morning. Sorry, Dad. My dad's here. Sorry, Dad. Um, uh, and I play to this day, and I love the game. It's like, this is one of the very rare movies where about a world that Van is talking about that doesn't even really work that hard to explain the world to you. Mm. It's like, it, it jumps right into the lingo. It jumps right into the details, and you have to catch up, and I love, I love that about it. I started, I'd never played before in this movie once, I, once it became rewatchable for me. I was always a blackjack guy, and all of a sudden I'm driving to the Mohegan, I'm driving to Foxwoods, I was living in Boston, and my future wife, didn't really fully understand it, and I'm not positive she believed me. Wait, I'm like, I'm gonna be back at like four in the morning. She was like, where are you going? Did Ricky go with you? No, Ricky, Ricky. did not go. <laughs> you guys imagine Bill with a fucking visor. Like, <laughs> he's showing up like, so you went through, a, you did a thing, you were trying to take down people at the, Johnny Chan at the Taj? 
Yeah. <laughs> Did you play poker before you saw Rounders? No, I'd, ne I'd never played in my life. I didn't even really understand it, but it made me want to play. Uh, we also caught Matt Damon, Ed Norton, yeah. at great points of their career, and the, the cast is loaded, which we'll get to. Um, the Damon Norton thing, though, unbelievable together. Every scene with them, I think, is a home run and a really great point of their career, CR, where you have Damon coming off Goodwill Hunting, Norton's coming off Primal Fear and the Larry Flint movie, and he just filmed American History X and feels like he's going to become one of our most important actors. And now they're together in this poker But movie. it's that moment before the moment. Like, they're, they're, they know something big is coming, but they're, like, there's, there's not the self-consciousness of who they are yet. I mean, Norton's got the American History X goatee when he's coming out of prison, right? Yeah. And I think... Thank I God that's honest, all he had from American History X. Rewatching this, I was kind of like... It's a crime that these guys didn't make more movies together. They have so much chemistry, like, in, in all of those scenes. Not to take away from Damon and Affleck, but it, it would have been interesting. Yeah, it's, it's weird that you don't... I can't think of the last time, and I'm sure Sean knows, but I can't think of the last time <laughs> that, that two actors at that particular point in their career, because I was attached to both Matt Damon and Edward Norton, and not because they were these huge box office stars, it's because everything they were doing was so goddamn good at the time. The talented Mr. Ripley, uh, you know, Fight Club would be after that, American History X, People vs. Larry Flint, Primal Fear. They were both on these heaters, and then they complemented each other perfectly. I can't think of another time. And Saving Private Ryan came out three months before yep. this movie. Same and thing. And that was the mo most people had seen Matt Damon to that point, too, so... Crazy boom era, late 90s, looking back, where you had all these under 35 leading men. You had Damon and Norton, you had Leo, Jim Carrey, Sandler, Will Smith, Vince Vaughn, Mark Wahlberg, McConaughey, Pitt, Clooney, I think he was under 35, Ben Stiller, and then you had Matt, Matthew Perry, and Mike Myers, Billy Crudup, Don Cheadle, and your guy Philip Seymour Hoffman. And they're all, it's like this amazing class that we kind of didn't realize was a class as it was happening, now you look back and it was. Um, big question, I'll just, this is an unanswerable, but we'll do it now. Could Damon and Norton have switched parts in this movie? I, I don't think so. I don't think so. Dirt bag I think, energy I think is Norton really hard. could have played Mike. I don't know if Matt could have played Norm. See, I feel the opposite. I think Damon could have grown, grown some bad facial hair, and you could have thrown a leather jacket on him, he could have done it, but I'm not sure Norton had the sweetness I, see, to be Mike McD. Damon is so square-jawed, there's something about him that screams like straight lace wasp. Yeah, it's right? hard to imagine Damon being like, she was a good looking older woman. You yeah, know, like, you know what I mean? Like, there's something like uh, Norton is wormy. He's got these little small hands. He's, bah, 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 What's bah, bah. the scummiest guy Matt Damon's ever played? It's not the Mr. Ripley guy. It was it's the a homosexual guy from maniac? fucking Interstellar. <laughs> oh, yeah. that, that guy's a scumbag. That motherfucker's a piece that's of it. shit. Yeah. Wait. What is that about guy's those... name Captain Worm? Yeah. Wait, what about the school ties guy? That guy was horrible. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, but see, even, but In a different way. Listen to the guys you're talking about. You're talking about uh, Ripley and the school ties guys who are perversions of that very classic American guy. They're swarmy because you trust them because you believe in, like, all of the shit that they're saying. Like, it's Worms, like you got to see him coming. You know what I mean? Do you think Rounders launched the poker, bro? No, I, I think Chris Moneymaker winning the World Series launched the poker boom, but I think it helped that we, we had all been watching Rounders on DVD for three years when that happened, and that got us excited about watching it on ESPN. What do you think? I have no idea. I, 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 mean, like, I started like, checking out poker because of Rounders, I'll say that, yeah. So I asked the, the writers of this movie, our friends Brian Kaufman and David Levine, I asked them this, like, we did a back and forth in 2006, and Levine said it was the whole card cam and yeah. probably their movie, and those were the two things. Because they, when they were filming poker, you never knew what the cards were. And then all of a sudden, somebody was like, what if we put a camera on the cards? And people were like, whoa. Um, <laughs> but before that, you just didn't know it was going to happen. Um, now it's to the point, I, I think it's impossible to play poker without thinking of rounders in some way. I don't, there, like, there's, no, there's been a million basketball movies, right? Um, you don't think of like one basketball movie when you're playing basketball, but with, with poker for some reason, you just have these different rounders moments in your head and nobody's really challenged it. There've been like- There've been good ones. Mississippi Grind's great. I mean like- Casino Royale had the, had the poker scene. There's some uh, debate about that. Yeah. I think every generation gets one. Like 
you had Cincinnati Kid in the 60s. You had California Split in the 70s. M M cool Hand Luke, there's Poker and Cool Hand Luke. You you Maverick. Maverick in the 90s, and then, and then Rounders at the end of the decade. Nothing in the, in the 21st century, though, besides Mississippi Grind. Not that I could think of. 21? Get the black out of here. <laughs> Was that ironic? <laughs> uh, the Tower Rounders. This movie has a lot of life lessons. I don't know if you guys realize. I'm going to read you some of them. These are actual quotes from the movie. We can't run from who we are. Our destiny chooses us. <laughs> These are like fortune cookies. Mm -hmm. From time to time, everyone goes bust. You agree sure. with that, Van? Yeah, for sure. Little Always Bobby, he went bust. Well, what, was the last time I went bust? No, little no, Bobby. No, come on, guy, don't, Bobby. don't, it's too early. Don't oh, get yeah. him going. <laughs> don't antagonize him, come on. Always leave yourself out. Sure. That's, we see that with sports teams sometimes, like the Deshaun Watson trade, no outs. Three first round picks, guaranteed contract, no outs. That's why I always got Barstool on speed dial, you know? Just, <laughs> <laughs> just, just in Whoa. case you push You're, it too far. Uh, Stanley hey, Chris. Hey, hey, everybody look at Bill's face real close. <laughs> that fucking hurt. <laughs> He's made that joke before. <laughs> You don't hear much about guys who take their shot and miss, but I'll tell you what happens to them. They end up pumping crappy jobs and graveyard shifts, trying to figure out how they came up short. That's the Detroit Lions right now. Um, are they here? Um, it, it, it's it's Jared Goff, everybody! <laughs> it's immoral to let a sucker keep his money. You can't lose what you don't put in the middle, but you can't win much either. Just like the saying goes in the poker game of life, women are the rake. Controversial, we'll get to that later. <laughs> and uh, if you're too careful, your whole life can become a fucking grind. My, you didn't get my favorite one. What is it? Like, that's not me. I see a mark, I fucking take him down. Oh, that's good. That's the coldest line of the whole movie. He can't help but eat the fucking week. Directed by John Dahl, $12 million budget, made $22.9 million. Miramax pulled it from the theater after three weeks. But they if they made a dollar well. every time one of the four of us watched it? Yeah. Avatar. <laughs> Roger Ebert, three stars. He said, it's essentially a sports picture in which the talented hero wins, loses, faces disaster, and then is paired off one last time against the champ. Not wrong. Yeah. Um, he liked it, though. So did Siskel. All right, so if you're not familiar with our podcast, we, do, we go through categories. We break, uh, break the movie down with some categories. First one is most rewatchable scene. Got to start with Teddy KGB crushing Mike at the beginning, right? <laughs> they all know me as a small timer, but that's about to change. Three stacks of high society, Sean? I like that they invented that phrase but now it's something we all use. There's a so you don't think that existed? No, Koppelman says that they came up with that. They were calling it three big dimes, three big dimes. That's what it was gonna be in the script. And then at the last minute, they came up with three stacks of high society. And now jerks in casinos all the time are like, oh, three stacks of high society, please. So that's a, that, there's a lot of real stuff in this movie, but I like the inventions too. So Mike McD has ace nine. What we could see is ace nine nine. So he's got a full house, but two aces and the three nines. And he goes all in, thinking that Teddy KGB has the spades. That's not what he has, Sean. Was that bad card playing by Mike McD? What's he doing there? You want to do this right now? Yeah. You want to do that, the breaking down that hand just, right just now? Just quickly. I mean, put yourself in his position. You got $30,000, you're sitting down with a Russian gangster. And he's a great poker player on top of being a gangster. And you're trying to make as much money as possible so that you can go to Las Vegas to participate in the World Series of Poker. And it never once occurs to you that maybe he's holding aces. The only thing you're thinking is, I hope he's not holding aces. So we're already getting into unanswerable questions. No, it's, it's but he fucks up. He, he realizes later. But we I find out play. why. We find out why he, why he was full of gas, right? Because of Johnny, because of Johnny Chan. It is kind of weird, you know what I mean? It's, it's tough. Because, like, you know, I, I hoop sometimes at the Equinox. 
And you know, every once in a while in the equinox, you in there and you like, a motherfucker can't miss. And they might have a pro on the other team. If I bust his ass, I'm not going to trial for the Lakers. <laughs> like, he, he had one good night and then basically cut his dick off in front of the whole world. Yeah. I agree. It's kind, of, it's kind of weird, right? That tells you what he thinks about himself. He had a good night against Chan, and then he wants to go to Vegas, and he just fucking shit the bed in front of everybody. It's what he deserved. You're right. I don't have the spades. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, the Mike McDermott face. I don't think that there's ever been a better I just got my ass kicked face. No. It was like, Matt it's Tanner. that and Zay Flowers two weeks ago. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. I was like, <laughs> sorry. Yeah. I like Kanish telling him to get up. <laughs> get up. Get out of the seat. The judges game is my next one, which is just an absolute heat check from Mike. He comes in. He's there for two and a half seconds, reads everybody's cards. It's all people that he has to get a grade for. It doesn't matter. And, uh, and we, I just like that game. I like what the corny old guy, like, Czechoslovakia. Check to and, Martin and Lewis. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then Damon just lays it out. Did you believe this, Sean? That sequence? That he could read everybody that fast? Because Copeland and Levine swear that, like, they saw Phil Hellman. It was seven-card stud, which makes it a little easier. Yeah, I mean, Chris's favorite player is Daniel Negreanu. And Daniel Negreanu, if you watch him on TV, he's just putting guys on their hands in yeah. real time. There's he's incredible like, oh, nine three. Like, this. What, the f what kind of dark arts do you have? So guys can do that. But some people say that the flaw of Mike as a character is that he worries too much about that. He worries too much about other people's cards and not enough about his own cards. What do you think? I have no idea what y'all are talking about. <laughs> but I don't know nothing about poker. Uh, to me, it was cool. Yeah. It looked like, you know, it looked like a, cool. a, the Joint Chiefs of Staff sitting around. And, they, and he, he came in and impressed them. And later on, he get to ask the motherfucker for $10,000. I can't wait till we talk about that. Yeah. Because <laughs> if something happens to me right now, there's nobody I can just go and ask for 10 grand to help get my... He's not going to give it to me. <laughs> uh, we'll talk later. Um, <laughs> next scene, Worm and Mike finally start playing together. They go to that mansion. And, uh, and he says, Worm and I fall into our old rhythm like Clyde Frazier and Earl Monroe. There's some billions DNA in some of the dialogue. We get to see Worm in action. Um, we get to see Worm say, what my Uncle Les always says, when the money's gone, <laughs> it's time to move on. So enjoy it, you secret handshake motherfuckers. Yeah. Um, You're missing a part about that, though, that I like. The, the girl. Come on, Bill. Oh, I know. I'm that's, guessing. A, that's very important to me, and we'll get to that later. But <laughs> the, the quote I gave about, or, or Worm gave about seeing a mark, Mike is a mark to Worm. And the way that you know that is because Mike says that he is leaving. Yes. And then Worm goes in. And she says to him, he told me you would be running a little bit late. Clint so Eastwood. He, he's, he's always, he already knows what he's going to do. So he's actually conning him into doing what he knows he's going to do. He's it's amazing, up. too, because Norton or Worm says, I'm sorry, the exact same way, like, 25 times during the movie, always to Mike. And Mike's like, okay, like, every time. <laughs> he's like, oh, I'm sorry. Uh. Uh, next one is Mike's girlfriend moves out, and thank God. But um, <laughs> we're, Mike sees his stuff missing, and he's like, oh, man, I knew she always knew how to throw away a shitty hand. And Worm says, I mean, look at you. You domesticated yourself for her. Uh, he does that whole thing. And then, you know, it cheers me up when I'm feeling shitty. Rolled up bases piece over kings. Piece. I don't think any, any scene that doesn't involve actual sports gets me more fired up. <laughs> yeah. And then Damon does it. All right. Fuck it, let's go. Let's play some fucking cards. And then what song is that that kicks in? It's uh, Funk Number 49 by the James Gang. Oh, man. An elite scene. Worm does the little fist pump. Yeah. Uh, I'm giving that the cut, Kid Cudi Pursuit of Happiness Award for Best Needle Drop, too. What's the best we're about to go gambling movie moment ever? This or Vegas Baby Vegas, Vegas you mean? Vegas Baby Vegas, yeah. What, what else do we have? What's in the running? It's probably uh, those color two, Color of Money? Right? In the finals? Oh, Call Our Money when he Color starts money. playing again? Yeah. yeah. Um, oh, Hangover. Hangover. Hangover's a good one. Um, 
Rain Man. Oh, that, Rain that Man. escalator with the suits. Yeah, that's well, pretty good. That's good. Yeah, that scene could have been longer. I really enjoyed watching Rain Man play blackjack. <laughs> it was great. The guy was awesome. That's like you and Jacoby um, up there playing blackjack. So this scene leads right into, this is beautiful, welcome to the Chesterfield South, and all their friends are there, and then they do, uh, they do the Nature Channel thing. I like that one as well. Anything else you want to add with that one? Or just, should I keep just going? Just the time in the Chesterfield? Yeah. It's a very, it feels like a very real representation of the kind of guys you would find in those secret poker clubs in the late 90s based on the way they describe it. This one's all based on the Mayfair, which is a real club, and just full of guys who look like they haven't walked more than 100 feet in five years. <laughs> <laughs> I like when Worm says to uh, Kanish, yeah, you keep grinding at, that, grinding at that rent money, Joe. That's noble work you're doing. Like the, it's got good insults for him. Uh, next one, the card game with the municipal workers. Yes. <sighs> Mike should have left when he heard Worm's Excuse voice. me, I don't understand. So, like, it, thank you. So, he, he hears Worm's voice. He's up 4,200 bucks. And I, automatically, he knows that is a harbinger of doom. His, his face is like, oh, my God. Can I just interject? Why just not, just break out. When he hears Worm's voice, he goes, holy shit, that's a hell of an elk. <laughs> that's the harbinger of doom for right, that's what he, His face, <laughs> there's so many moments in this where Damon does, like, subtle stuff with his face to let you know just how defeated yeah. he is. And that's one of them. Hey, man, I'm tired. I got to go back and watch a Wild on Ibiza on the E! Channel. It's 98. <laughs> let me get out of here. Like, like, why did, like, y'all used to watch that shit. Like, so, why did he stay? Why did he stay? I'm, I'm, I'm literally asking. I, I should ask Koppelman this next time I... I mean, it's $4,000 more dollars is what he needed. They needed they're to get so to 15. Close. They were really close. Took a chance. They're, they're working those Binghamton cops. Uh, next one is... Uh, Hate to get punched in the throat many times by a state trooper. That's, yeah, that's not what you good. want. Mike Town Kanish, how he bluffed Johnny Chan. Leading to Johnny Chan playing himself in a flashback scene. <laughs> the Danny McBride Award? <laughs> yeah. Um, the Sorry John, I don't remember. And uh, some good Tortoro here, right? How many scenes is he in? Probably three, Kanish? four? Four? Yeah, four, four, four or five. Or something yeah. like that. He's amazing in this movie. You look like Dwayne Bobbick after we went <laughs> one round with Norton. Uh, and then the final Teddy Mike Hand is the last rewatchable scene. I mean, you could split it up where he, he blasts him early. Does the Wario trick on him, but really gets to the end and the, and the big hand. And Teddy just goes to another level. I, I don't even understand. He's ripping off line after line. He's doing splash the pot. He's just, it's, it's what is it, like a six minute heat check, Chris? Oh my God. I mean, just like everything he says to Rispoli, where it's just like, your fate is sitting next to you. All of your dreams go up. <laughs> It's totally crazy. I'm just like, he, I know. He just does Borat, and he thinks it's... <laughs> <laughs> That's Borat. You should have made Joe your wife. <laughs> My wife, Grandma. <laughs> you would never get this. <laughs> but the way he gets him to keep playing, though, that was my shit for years, man. You know, because uh, I told you guys you? before, oh, yeah. that, was, that was during my, my, you know, pointing at my crotch era because of DX. Yeah. You know, I, you know, walking down the street, you see a nun, suck it, sister Anne. <laughs> and the, the, the fact that he... You would like, do that to nuns? Whoever, bro. Like, whoever. I remember it, went, it really went too far. When I hit... Yeah. I, I, was so, I was so ingrained with it that I hit my mom with it. Oh, no. I, it was such a part of me. My mom's like, man, come in here. I'm like, yo, what's up, mom? Fucking suck it. <laughs> and she's like, boy, did you just point at your dick? <laughs> but that... Like, do you remember the last time I stick it in you? <laughs> and he's like, he's like I was whipping a like, horse. Bru and but he, he does it, and then it doesn't quite work on Mike. And he's like, nah, he need a little bit more. He need a couple more yeah. inches. <laughs> it's like the best thing in the world. I was doing that for like Can five I just years. say also the most amazing part about that is Teddy keeps turning around to watch like late 90s German soccer. <laughs> right. <laughs> so he'll fuck with Mike and he'll be like, hey, you go ahead. And he's just like, oh, 2-1. You know, he's just like, <laughs> I imagine he probably had fixed that match or something like that, but. He does the hanging around, hanging around alligator bud. He does the respect is all you have in the morning. Just taunting him, taunting him, taunting him. Then 
Then it flips on him. Mike McD gets him. He flaps the nut straight. And then that's it. Mike wins his money back. Uh, any other rewatchable scenes? Yeah. Uh, when Mike and Worm first go to the Chesterfield and Mike leaves him there and he's with Roman and Maurice. The Roman and Maurice scene and out into the hot dog, Norton is Benny Hanna cooking. It is yeah. unreal how good he is. He's like, you want to see this seventh card? You better stop speaking fucking Sputnik. Like, yeah. <laughs> You got any other ones? The, the first scene between Mike and the judge. Like, you know, when Mike is talking to the judge and the judge is telling Mike how oh, he, the yeshiva? Yeah, it's talking about the yeshiva situation. Should we power rank yeshiva stories in this yeah, movie? Yeah. <laughs> it felt like the same story twice. I don't mean to it. They did, but, but like the judge's yeshiva story is very important to the overall theme of the yeah. film. So like that was like a rewatchable scene for me. I remember I, I told a similar story to Sean when I was trying to get you to move to Los Angeles. <laughs> Look at me now. I followed my calling. What do you have for most rewatchable scene? We're not going to talk about Petra coming to no, visit we're, Mike. No, we're doing that later. But that's not rewatchable, you don't think? That's what's I mean, it is worse. for me. Yeah. <laughs> it's a notable sequence. Yeah, no, save it. What do you have for most rewatchable? I think it's uh, rolled up aces over kings. I have that too. What well, do you got, Van? The most rewatchable scene is the final scene to me. Yeah, Mike taking down KGB. That's like the most rewatchable scene. What do you have, Chris? Uh, I go with the last Teddy, Teddy KGB hand. What stage is the best? Uh, we mentioned one of the best opening lines of the 90s. Worm's last line I really like. Hey, at least you're rounding again. You're going to thank me for that someday. <laughs> He's right. Mike's probably like a multimillionaire now. We're, we're definitely going to talk about that. Yeah. Uh, but then he disappears for the last 25 minutes. I always forget. Then Worm leaves and does yeah, not come gone. back. Uh, a great movie with narration? Yes. Tough. The narration also, the jargon, like you were saying, the jargon just drops you right in. But it's crucial that the VO kind of explains the rules of poker and kind of explains what they're doing, but at the same time still uses vocab that you wouldn't know as a novice. So it's like somebody's on tilt. He doesn't explain what that is, but you... You do get more about poker because of the voiceover. It's like an actually ingenious use of it. The amount of exposition that would be needed if not for the voiceover would ruin the pacing of the movie. Which is something that would never happen at the table. Right. So, so it would seem really fake. I have established myself on the rewatchables as anti-narration, and yet many of my favorite movies yeah. have narration. So as usual, I'm an idiot. Um, but this, I think, has some of the best narration of anything. What do you think that's about? Well, it's usually when it's a, a movie where the narration is bad, it feels more profound. Where it's just like, ugh, you guys couldn't figure out how to edit this thing, so you just had the character. So I grew up in Alabama. Yeah. And, and then it's like, oh, my so God. So Forrest Gump. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, what do you got for what stage is the best? Oh, gosh. Well, I love the stakes of this movie. I hadn't really thought about this until the most recent viewing of it, but, like, even in the late 90s, like, their life is hanging on 15 grand. And, like, the judge is, like, I can, I'm not a wealthy man. Like, I can give you 10. I can't give you 15. Like, this isn't hundreds of millions of dollars. It's, like, real money to real people. And it actually makes the drama really hit for me. Um, the Russian mob. I'm serious. Because, like, it, up to this point, I was only really familiar with the tenacity of the Italian mob. <laughs> and then after this, the Russian mob had their moment until John Wick killed them all, rest in peace. But think about it. After this movie, it was this movie. Then it was fucking... Eastern uh, Promises. It was Eastern Promises. Yeah. And then it was Training Day. And the Russians took the mob over until they killed the wrong dog. I like it. <laughs> what do you got, Sean? Uh... <laughs> I'm getting over the Russian mob. <laughs> like the Russian mob's always been here, just for the record. No, but I but I've never seen them like in movies though. Yeah. I didn't really know them. They didn't, they weren't the mob. This is their in this movies. is their movie rookie season. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Mm. I mean, I think the the allure of the poker clubs of that time when you could sit down with a pro if you got initiated into that world, and things are not like that anymore. That like that hidden world has all been shut down. Mm. You know, the Mayfair is gone, all those places are gone now. But that is a very nostalgic time. Bill, I have one that I think you and I will share. Is there anything better or anything that's aged the best? Like the scene when a guy is getting out of jail and he gets his stuff back? Uh, that's great. <laughs> it is never fails. Should that be just a YouTube montage that never like ends? One toothpick. Yeah. What would, what would you get back? 
Uh, like a Ben Simmons jersey and like a <laughs> ski hat? Yeah, Nicorette, Nicorette Ben Gums. Simmons jersey, yeah. Uh, Your beanie? Yeah. <laughs> Another one Sage the best. Um, so way back when, when I was writing for page two at ESPN.com, it was like my first or second year. And I used to do this gimmick for awards where I would hand out awards, but I would hand out movie quotes. And I did rounders, and my editors were like, rounders? And I'm like, yeah, this movie's like, I'm just watching a lot. I love this movie. But I, I, I didn't know if people liked it, because I'm living in Boston. Like, I had no idea. And put it out there, and everybody was like, fuck yeah, rounders. And I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> and it's like pre-Twitter. Like, you pre-Reddit, you have no idea what people like, don't like. So you just kind of throw shit out. And that was when I was like, oh, this movie's going to have real legs. Like, this is probably like four years after. Uh, the it, name Johnny Chan. Yeah, so cool. when I saw this movie, I didn't know Johnny Chan was a real person. I didn't know if they had faked all of this stuff, and it seemed too good to be true. But no, he was a back-to-back -back World Series of Poker guy, and his name was Johnny Chan. Like, you can't even make that shit up. Yeah, he's, it's like he should, he should be in Street Fighter 2 or something. Yeah. <laughs> What's a better name than that? Um, just walking back in here makes me queasy. I feel like Buckner walking back in a shade. That's shake. a great line. It hurts every time, but I respect the writing. <laughs> Settle down. Hey, let me ask you a question about that line. Do you think that's Damon coming with that joint right there? The oh, like Buckner an ad joke? Yeah, do you, I mean, do you think Matt Damon goes, like, when he sees that, because he's a Red Sox guy. You think yeah. that I, every time it feels so, like, sincere to the character and who I know Matt Damon to be, you think that's Damon coming up with that one? No, nah, I think Koppelman's a big New York fan that was a little mm -hmm. fucking to the Red Sox here. fans. I know what he was up to. Where do you think Mike McDee is from? He's... Well, because he wears the fucking hat with no logo, which, like, nobody actually does, except for, like, Chris Evans in Avengers movies. So he's from, like... So, but I was like, I wonder whether or not he's not wearing a Red Sox hat because he doesn't want to get punched, but he's not going to wear a New York hat. And I was just curious whether or not you guys thought Mike was, like... So he's from, like, Simsbury, Connecticut? <laughs> Jersey? Everything's Jersey. Jersey? Yeah. Rhode Island? Um... I like this one because I think it's true, where they say few players can remember the best hands they won, but every player can remember with remarkable accuracy the tough beats of their career. This is so true. I think about the terrible Boston losses way more than I think about the wins. There's science to that. Sean, same with you. You think about the Jets losses way more <laughs> than the big Careful. Jets wins. You're in my town tonight. <laughs> hey! <laughs> Bill, I have to tell you, we actually all think about the terrible Boston losses more than anything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what about um, the, the beats of your career, though? Do you think about those or just your sports teams? Sports beats. Okay. <laughs> Bill has no bad beats in his career. <laughs> She's really got him by the balls. That's not so bad, is it? Depends on the grip. <laughs> Great exchange. Um, so Mike McDee trying to go to the WSOP at the end. Makes so much more sense now in 2024 than I think it did to me in 1998. 1998, it's like, where, wait, where's he going? It's a tournament. They play like once a year. Now it's like, oh yeah, he's going to WSOP. Um, Martin Landau, who plays Petrovsky, the law professor. And then he ended up on Entourage in the mid 2000s <laughs> as the Bob Evans character. It's and it was Martin like Landau's a nice little legacy. Petrovsky <laughs> sequel almost. Might be interested in. um, he won an Academy Award for Ed Wood. Ed Wood. Yeah, we have, we have some issues with that one. Um, and then Johnny Chan playing himself. So I was thinking the best athlete playing himself cameos, which is obviously Kareem in Airplane is a classic. Um, Xavier McDaniel in singles. Amazing. Yeah. Brett Favre, there's something about Mary. Uh, you Bob play a guy stealing millions of dollars from <laughs> welfare people in Mississippi. <laughs> I, I'm just doing movies, Van. Um, <laughs> Bob Watson and Cesar Cedeno and Bad News Bears Break of Training. And we just covered this. Dr. J in Philadelphia. Yeah. Who ends up in a cameo with the villains of the movie. And it's like nobody in Dr. Like, J's hey, life Chuck? told him, hey, Chuck, what's going on? Hey, let me ask you a question. What's your issue with Space Jam? Is that not on there? Does that count as cameos? He's Michael Space Jordan. Jam? That's not a cameo. He stars in it. Oh, but you're saying it's just a cameo, it has to be cameo, a cameo. Like one, oh, just one a cameo. scene cameo. What yeah. about Bird and Ewing and all them in Space Jam, you know? 
Bird. Oh, Mike Tyson in the hangover. Oh, Mike Tyson. That's a good one. Mike Tyson in the hangover, yeah. yeah. Dan Marino and Ace Marino Ventura. In? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Ace Ventura. Yeah. That's, That's a good great. one. Yeah, yeah, yeah Ace is yeah, out, yeah. Dan. <laughs> I should have crowdsourced this better. Wow. Um, All right. <laughs> Larry Bird and Blue Chips. Um, so, big Kahuna Burger Award for best use of food and drink. It's got to be the Oreos, right? Oh, yeah, for sure. in an Oreo scene. I don't know if Oreos have ever been more involved. Yeah, r runner up would go the hot dog and the amount of soy sauce Worm puts in his noodles. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like. Chris, what do you got for Den of Thieves Benny Hanna Award for scene stealing location? Grandma's brothel. Oh. <laughs> Love the red. What a choice. What a speaker choice. Yeah. By the way, you, what I like about Grandma's brothel is. <laughs> yeah. Why don't you just leave that hanging for a second? <laughs> it's the attainability of the women that were inside. Yeah. I got family here. I'm just saying. You go in Grandma's brothel, you're like, that was casted correctly. Yeah. He's got stains on his shirt. I feel like the Taj is scene-stealing location. Yeah. It's the Taj. What do you have for Great Shot Gordo? Best, oh, most cinematic shot. This is easy. Uh, Kanish and Mike outside of KGB's the first time. The steam rising up out of the vents, the yeah. shot oh, of the yeah. city. So yeah. cool. Great. Uh, the Vincent Chase Award, named after Vincent Chase and Entourage. Are we sure this character was actually good at his job? <laughs> um, Miramax, which released this movie and then panicked and pulled it three weeks after it got released. Why'd you make a careful Bill face? I didn't, no. <laughs> no, you made a careful Bill face. No, let's do an hour on Miramax. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're gonna move on. Um, the Butch's Girl Wait, Brand Wait, I Award. actually have a Vincent Chase for you guys. What is it? I do too. Uh, worm is a card cheat? Was Worm a good card cheat? He seems to be getting called out a lot. He picked up some tricks in the joint. Apparently I know. Not. Well, he had to lose to the brothers to pay off the cops, but like. Can I, can I say something about that? <laughs> so, this is real quick. I appreciate the use of the word brothers. <laughs> <laughs> Because I'm with y'all in these movies, baby. I'm with y'all in Goodfellas. I'm with y'all in The Sopranos. I watch these movies with y'all, and I gotta eat a lot of N-words. <laughs> <laughs> and Worm used brothers, I'm like, fuck it with you, dog. <laughs> <laughs> but he gets spotted by Kanish, Mike, and the cops, like, pretty easily. And Petro probably knows, too. So it's like, who is he actually successfully cheating? Well, it's almost like people, he was but... a lifelong loser. <laughs> um, what do you got? Are Mike and Teddy bad at poker? <laughs> Have we considered that? Because they both lose on like pretty lame hands. It's like a big fat open straight draw on the table and Teddy's like, there's no way he's got the straight. <laughs> why, do, why not? It's the most obvious hand on the board. No? Uh, maybe it was, maybe nobody was, because they weren't playing millions of poker hands Could on be. the internet yet. They just weren't good enough at it yet. Um, before we do this next category, I'd like to thank the Home Depot for helping to sponsor <laughs> yeah. this event. Yeah. Um, okay, let's get into it. The Butch's Girlfriend Award for Weak Link of the Film, which is also the Mallory Rubin Award for Did This Movie Need a Better Sex Scene. All right, Van. Knock on the door, it's Petra. Walk us through what happens next. Okay. So, so Petra's like six feet tall. I mean, she's, she's Jean Grey, like in a couple of years. So she's, you know, it's like, she's a comic book character. And I know that Mike is supposed to be this sort of pure, I got all of this stuff, but give me a fucking break. You just broke up with your girl. It's right there for you, Mike. What are you thinking, bruh? It's so, un every time I watch it, I think that there's a director's cut somewhere where they wake up the next morning, just cigarettes all around them, not even thinking about Worm anymore. Now Mike's thinking about starting a family. It's like a completely different situation. That juxtaposed with the fact, God bless Gretchen Maul, but his girl is so fucking annoying in this movie. It's, it's unbearable. My girl is here somewhere. 
Shout out to Kalika. And every once in a while, I come home, and you know what she knows about me? I got to play Spider-Man 2 for three hours. <laughs> Does it cost $30,000 to do that? I'm just saying. She knows. Guess what? He been talking to Bill all day. Let my, let my brother play the game. I almost dropped the N-word. <laughs> so she in won't scene, let this man play any. She searching through his shit, takes the money, puts the money on passive-aggressive bullshit. <laughs> If you see that much money, you're supposed to take your shit off and get in the shower with this motherfucker. <laughs> I'm done. I just got, could the older I get, at first, you know, it's all Gretchen Maul, she's so cute and all of this stuff. I have theories about this, by the way. Later on, we'll talk about it. But the more I watch it, it's unbearable how annoying she is in this film. She's coming up in later categories. <laughs> yeah. Um, Petra comes over, six foot, drop dead gorgeous Russian. Comes in, Mike's watching the 88 World Series of Poker. She immediately knows what tournament we're watching and, what, and what's about to happen in the hand. And then she's doing the, oh look, he knows this man well enough to check all the way. She's like narrating it. And then asks for some money and then throws himself, throws herself at him and starts making out with him and he pulls back. And it's the most unrealistic scene I in was movie trying, history. I was trying it's to just, think of what... There's no way. The 2024 corollary to this would be for you. So, Famke Jansen shows up, knocks on your doors like, Hey, Bill, I brought Joe and the juice over. You like the kale smoothie, right? Oh, are you watching Pacers Magic on League Pass? <laughs> Halliburton might make all Is NBA. Is Halliburton playing? And if he does, what happens to his trade value? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can I make you a latte? Um, she literally says, why don't I stay for a while? No, no, that's not what she says. See, she that's says, not sexy. That's her last like, wait, thing. Like, what she, she says, I can stay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can stay. <laughs> and by the way, you know what else is the thing? Think about how bad she wants them. This motherfucker don't have no furniture. He's in there watching, he's watching the World Series on poker on VHS. She really wants it. Mike! Mike wants, you know. I did such a good job of not talking during this part of the conversation. Yeah, you did great. <laughs> Copman and Levine said in 2006 that it was the biggest mistake of the film probably of our entire career. <laughs> <laughs> they said, uh, that they wanted to make the debt of money seem so important to Mike that he had to deal with it right away. In hindsight, we were totally wrong. <laughs> so there you go. What's age the worst? Uh, Van mentioned Gretchen Maul. Um, there's a wet blanket sports movie girlfriend legacy in 70s, 80s, 90s movies with, uh, you know, we talked about this last time we did Creed, but Adrian, Rocky IV, doesn't fucking go to Russia. Never forgive her for that. Uh, Ned Braden's wife at Slapshot. The lady in Hoosiers who tries to get Normandale fired for like an hour. And then the team starts winning and she's like, hey, Norman, let's go. Um, <laughs> there's been a lot of bad ones. This is a really rough character where it's just every, and it's not even, it's just a, it was, they're trying to get it so that he's got to move back to his old life. Yeah. And this new life has to go away. But every scene, she's like, Mike, why do you play poker? What's going on? And it just, it, it's just brutal. But she's not shrill, and she uses poker logic against Mike. I'm just playing devil's advocate. But oh, she's you're, just, you're in on her now? I'm not in, but I'm just saying, like, when she's like, I'm cutting my losses, you're like, you're a bum hand. Like, she's not yelling at him because he wants to play poker. She's just like, you can't do it with me. His boy just got out of jail. Hey, hey. <laughs> Thank you, Chris, I know, I know, for standing know, up for see, Joe. I'm an ally to Joe. Hey, okay? I just be honest yeah. with you. Hey, can you leave that woke I shit? I walk with Joe. <laughs> we talking shit up here. Now, look, I get it. She's been hurt before. <laughs> but your man got one passion in the world. You got one, you gotta, you gotta help him. You gotta stoke that passion, man. You know what I'm saying? That's what ends up, geez, you took all this motherfucker's furniture and left. His boy had to see that. His man got out of jail. She don't want to go to hang out with his boy. I'm not with it. There's nothing you can say, Susan B. Anthony, that can make me. 
I don't, I don't think it's that at all. I don't think it's either of those things. I, the, Joe is not the romantic lead of the film. It's, it's Worm. Worm is the guy who Mike is hooked on and in love with. That's the real, it's a noir, and the femme fatale is Worm. He's the one who keeps leading him down the wrong path. That's the idea of the movie. It's unfortunate that Joe is written the way that Joe is written. She's not the great, greatest character. But Worm is really his love affair. And it breaks at the end because they're not good for each other. Jeez. So initially, they wrote the script and he had a buddy Broke named... back rounders. <laughs> <laughs> you would know. <laughs> yeah. Well, we talked about last, last night. Last night. Well, last uh, night. you missed last well, night. Well, not last night, like... <laughs> last night at the other show. Last night at the other show, I said something. Van had a theory about Apollo and Rocky that almost caused a riot in the city of Philadelphia. Um, Koppelman and Levine, they, uh, they wrote the extra character named Atkinson, who is Mike's law school buddy. And he was kind of like the good side of Worm. And they ended up, the studio made them cut it. And then they had to just give. Is more, that supposed to be the annoying scenes. guy from Mock Court who's like, not only are you not punctual, but you don't <laughs> no, know I, anything? No, I think it's a different guy. Um, <laughs> it's like, fuck out of here, man. That's Mike McD. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> this guy took down Johnny Chan. <laughs> <laughs> more what stage the worst? Uh, it, poor Eric Seidel, who I think was one of the best poker players of the '90s, right? He's one of the best poker players of all time. And in this movie, it just gets annihilated by Johnny Chan, and it's just crestfallen and devastated. And probably more people have seen him in this movie than anything else he's done, right? Yeah, he always says whenever he sees anybody involved with Rounders, thank you so much for putting a spotlight on the worst moment of my life. Yeah. <laughs> what do you got for what's age the worst? Uh, I don't think that this movie has fared well with 20 years of poker Reddit analyzing it, because there's 10 years of guys just being like, no, that's not how that hand would have gone. And now it's devolved to dudes being like, how I would have closed Petra <laughs> in five steps. It's just like, so just, I did the work. Don't just, don't, don't read Poker Reddit about this. Y'all already told mine. What do you got, Sean? Anything? I got a couple more. No, go ahead. Uh, let's talk about the biggest reach in the movie, which was uh, Petrovsky giving Mike 10 grand. Mike's, his face is fucked up. He's just been in a fight. He's just no-showed a bunch of classes and fake trials. And then he's like, I need 15 grand. And Petrovsky's like... And I'm dropping out of law school, which means I yeah. won't make a lawyer's salary to pay you yeah. back. Yeah. You might never see me again. And Petrovsky's like, I have 10, but I got one more yeshiva story. <laughs> That's the price. Just one more. I'm just going to rip through this. Um, I think I actually would have left and just gotten beaten up by the mob over here at the yeshiva story yeah. again. I don't know. What would you have done? Yeshiva story, second yeshiva story, or the mob? So it's either grandma kills me or I sit with an old man for five minutes. <laughs> um, another what's age the worst. This, I mean, I've seen this movie too many times, but when he starts trash talking Teddy KGB and he does, you feeling satisfied now, Teddy? We go yeah. bust you all night. It's like, he's just immediately shot to death. <laughs> That's it, he's just dead. They try. KGB has too much integrity. They were about to come get him, but KGB paid that man his money. That was gonna be that was gonna be my pick, one of my picking nits was why does Teddy have integrity? He's a Russian mobster. It's like Niet. Uh, more categories. Was there a better title for this movie? I have some. <laughs> one, leave that bitch, Mike. I don't know if that would have crossed all the quadrants that so we were looking for. Is there, is there a comma, leave that bitch comma, Mike, or just <laughs> leave, leave that, that bitch, bitch Mike? comma, Mike. Yeah. Okay. I have, I have a huge theory, but I don't want to tell my other title until after okay. we get to How to Stay. Yeah. Um, what about Flop the Nuts Straight? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, want to do How to Stay Award? What do you uh, got, Chris? Okay. Uh, Mike actually should have spotted KGB's tell like long before. The whole thing at Atlantic City is he's Spock and he can just be like, that guy touches his face and this person plays with their crucifix or whatever. And then in the meantime, he's at KGB staring at this guy going like. <laughs> <laughs> 
God, the uncrackable Russian. <laughs> the Sphinx, how will I ever read him? It's like, he speaks like Borat and plays with Oreos, like one of those things. So Malkovich changed this a little bit from yeah. what was in the script, right? So originally it was just, does he eat the cookie or not eat the cookie? And that's the tell. And he included this idea of opening the cookie next to his ear, <laughs> which would then tell him whether to eat it or not. <laughs> Which I don't. I really think he was understand. trying to get all the cream on one wafer, and but just he still that, eats the whole cookie. But some guys like splitting it up. You know Which, what I mean? What, what kind of guy are you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how much cream do you like, Chris? <laughs> okay, broke back rounders. Yeah. <laughs> Try to redirect. Finn, you got a hot steak? Yes, I do. Um, oh boy, put your fucking seatbelt on. It's not. It's not as. It's not like the. Real, so, this movie is actual actually a sequel to Cape Fear. <laughs> Worm fucking hates Mike. And he was in jail for years with a picture of Mike, all of these things together, plotting about how he was going to ruin Mike's fucking life when he got out of jail. And everything that he does in this movie is to fuck over Mike, including the wet blanket girlfriend. At the end of the movie... When he gives her the money to hand it to Petrovsky, Petrovsky never got that money. She gave that money to Worm. Yeah. Worm is behind the scenes the whole time just figuring out, I'm gonna fuck this dude over. I'm gonna fuck this pretty boy over. I can't fucking stand this guy. Fuck this guy. Fuck this Comes guy. Comes to Binghamton and gets a beaten up. The, the whole nine. His whole job. He, Worm is out for 36 hours and Mike has dropped out of school, <laughs> lost his girl, Got the shit kicked out of him. Like, it's it literally the worst person in the world for him. He's doing this on purpose and making Mike feel bad about it. That's my hottest take. I like it's that you think it's, good, it's an incredible take. But the idea of a guy who dresses like Serpico, eats hot dogs, and never <laughs> sleeps is actually Kaiser Soze is amazing. That's who he is. <laughs> yeah. I keep having to do hottest takes after Van. <laughs> What's yours? Uh, the biggest winner of this movie is not Matt Damon or Edward Norton or Koppelman Levine or John Dahl, the director, or Miramax, or even Poker. It's ESPN. Because ESPN somehow tricked people into thinking that they should watch Poker for like 14 hours in the middle of July for like nine years, and I'm one of those people. Like, do you know how long the World Series of Poker is? How long it goes on? How many hours and hands are played in that time? And they just programmed it through full summers with hand after hand after hand in all the tournaments that they played there. And everybody was like, this is a good idea. I should watch this. <laughs> Did it happen because there was like a hockey strike? Didn't, isn't that like why they started putting poker on the TV? I think it was because there was some interest yeah. and then all of a sudden it just blew up. Well, I, we talked about how much this movie influenced the poker boom, but isn't it fair to say that there weren't really poker celebrities that were known writ large until after this movie came out? But I didn't really know about any of those guys. Like, now you kind of know some of the guys that are out there making a lot of money playing poker. But I didn't really know about them. It's one of the things that ESPN did really well is they found a way to narrati narrativize around the Phil Ivies and the Phil Doyle I, yeah. Brunsons of the world. Two casting what-ifs. It was supposed to be Phil Hellmuth instead of Johnny Chan. Thank God. I don't like <laughs> Phil Hellmuth. <laughs> Would it then, have been better, though? Because... No, Johnny Chan's a lead. But people in this love movie. to see Phil Hemmuth get his ass kicked in poker. Like, yeah. that's very satisfying. I, I feel like he would have dined off it. It would have been annoying. Yeah. Thank God. Wouldn't he have flipped out, though, if he was like, I'm sorry, Phil, I don't remember? Isn't Hellmuth like the big tilt guy? The poker yeah, really yeah, yeah. Uh, Nev Campbell turned down the role of Joe. She was red hot. This was Party of Five, uh, Scream, Scream yeah. Wild Thanks, did not want to do it. The Teddy KGB Award for actor doing his own thing. We rarely get to hand out an award to somebody in the movie. Um, doubling as the Ruffalo Hannah Ribbon and Partridge over acting award. Chris. <laughs> did Malkovich's Russian accent? It, it worked, right? Did it this work? is just such a perfect time in American history where we did not care. Where I was like, <laughs> it's Malkovich. I don't care if this is, like, accurate to, like, West Belarus or not. It's like, <laughs> this guy is cooking. I love it. I think as the years pass, I'm 100% in 
I think initially I was like, what the fuck is this guy doing? Yeah. I think Matt Damon was like, what the fuck is this guy doing? I think it helped that it was immediately preceded by Con Air. And so in Con Air, he played Cyrus the Virus, and everybody was like, sure. (laughs) Malkovich belongs in this movie now, so he could do anything, and we'd we'd buy it. You in on it, Van? All the way. Okay. Danny McBride Award for playing yourself, obviously, Johnny Chan. Um, The best that guy award, we could go with the Serbian doctor from ER, or Croatian doctor. Gorin, yeah. Gorin Mistich. He plays Maurice, or the, the other one? I think he plays Roman. Roman. Uh, or then Grandma. Maurice is the guy at Mike. They put in a fucking bracelet on yeah. me. <laughs> uh, grandma, played by Michael Raspoli. Yeah. Do you know the Michael Raspoli, the great Michael Raspoli fact? Runner up to Tony Soprano to Gandolfini. So. so, you know that I thought about this. So, there's a, we did Creed last night. Yeah. We're doing rounders. There was a that guy in back to back movies. Yes. Um, Brian Anthony Wilson. The guy who plays Adonis Creed's boss, yeah. he turns in the typed out <laughs> resignation letter to, yeah. hey, take this motherfucker, I quit. Um, and he was one of the guys in jail that Worm was playing with before he got out of jail. He was the one who goes, Worm, you don't even smoke. You don't even <laughs> smoke, yeah. The brothers. Brothers. It's February. Dion Waiter's a word. Can I, can I just throw out one more, one more of that guy, actually? Yeah. Yeah. It's for uh, Sal Richards. Who is the golf club? The guy at the golf club. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Mike yeah, holds yeah. too, and he's one. like, come back anytime. Yeah. I'll bluff the big ringer. <laughs> Dion Waiters, is Teddy KGB eligible? It's in the movie like 30 minutes. I'm gonna say ineligible. Would you guys allow Fomka? Petra is eligible, right? Petra has more scenes than Teddy. You think so? Okay. Kanish is only three scenes. It can't be Kanish. It though. can't be Kanish. Yeah. Grandma? He's in it too much. Landau? Landau. It's like a slow heat check. Yeah. It's a third yeshiva How story. How can you give it to yeah. him after you've besmirched him? What about Bill Camp saying oily finish in the cigar bar? <laughs> <laughs> you guys know it's Bill Camp? Um, recasting couch, just quickly. Who's Johnny Chan in 2024? What poker player do they use that has the I highest I still think impact? it's Phil Ivey. It's Phil Ivey? Yeah. Okay. Uh, new category that we're doing just for the live shows. <laughs> <laughs> what does Tony Romo's director's commentary of this movie sound like? Ah. Chris, you want to take a whack? <laughs> um, I think it would be best for the Petra scene. Where it's like, she's coming in the door, Jim. <laughs> he's still emotional about Joe, though. I don't know if he's got it in him, Jim. She knows every hand of the 88 World Series of Poker, Jim. It is a sports movie, though. Like, he could just do... He you flopped the nuts, scene. Jim! Say, say, stop, Jim! half ass internet research. Levine and Koppelman wrote rounders in an apartment building's basement storage room that Koppelman's wife cleaned out for them. It was their first script they wrote together. All the law school stuff was filmed at Rutgers University. Just real quick, Koppelman's wife did what? Cleaned out. Oh, so she supported base. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Just making sure. Malkovich got his Russian accent. This was on the internet. From listening to a Russian woman talk for long hours. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, at grandma's. Yeah. That woman's name was Borat. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Matt Damon and Edward Norton played the 98 WSOP. And in the first day, Damon had pocket kings and got knocked out by Doyle Brunson, who had pocket aces, and sent his ass home. (laughs) He's going home, Jim. (laughs) Pocket kings, not enough. Apex Mountain. Damon, no. Norton, no. Poker, not yet. Did we, have we done Damon's? Apex Mountain in the past? It's got to be Born, right? The first Born. It's like a billion-dollar franchise. Good you guys don't Goodwill think this is Norton? Hunting. Norton is, is Apex Mountain? American, American History X is about is to come Fight out. Club, Fight, Club. Fight Club for Norton? Yeah. Fight Club. Sure. <laughs> Maybe the Incredible Hulk? Malkovich Dangerous Liaisons? That's what I was thinking. Yeah. Being John Malkovich? What do you have for Fam Kid Jansen? Or what about Bob Being Kid John Jansen? Malkovich? Being John Malkovich. Oh, Being John Malkovich. Yeah. 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 yeah, that's right. They didn't movie after him. What about Fam K? Famke, Famke. Jean Grey. Yeah. It's a telepath and a telekinetic. Yeah. Is that a movie? <laughs> Get out of here. X-Men. 
Totoro? X, X, X2? X2. Which, uh, which Totoro movie? Lebowski. Do right, the right Lebowski. thing. Lebowski. That's fair. <laughs> uh, <laughs> some folks in the crowd are shouting out Oreos. I think that's a good shout. I had Oreos coming up. Great. Uh, what about Binghamton? When's it ever been better? <laughs> a lot of alums tonight, huh? Yeah. That state school. Love that. That tuition. Um, nice. Johnny Chan, Apex Mountain. Is it back to back World Series of Pokers so. or this yeah. movie? I'm going to say back to back. Or getting housed by Mike McDee yeah. at the end of Rounders. <laughs> Pretty cool of him to just let that happen. Atlantic City? Uh, I think it Bruce was my Springsteen bachelor party, singing actually. Of Atlantic City? Your, right. your bachelor party? Too many yeah. big, huge fights there and stuff. 90s Atlantic City was, was pretty, popping, pretty yeah. good. Yeah, I don't know. Um, Russians? No. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Just as an overall? Gretchen Mall, definitely not. Um, Best racehorse name is the next category. We can go Teddy KGB, Mike McD, Rounder, or The Rake. <laughs> the Rake. <laughs> the Rake, you like that one? All right, let's, uh, let's pick some nits. Okay. What do you got, CR? Um, so one thing would just be like Mike and uh, Mike referencing Clyde and Pearl as the Knicks. Like it was like, we just slipped right into it like Clyde and Pearl. It's the late 90s. Those guys, wouldn't they be like Rod Strickland and Mark Jackson? Or like, what? why would they be going all the way That's back fair. to the 70s? That's like a compliment thing. Uh, also, it's not a nitpick, but Petrovsky having his own bottle of gin at the bar is a choice. You know, I don't know. Does he bring it? Do they just give him the bottle of Seagram's? Like, what's going on there? What do you got, Van? So, I love New York. Love you guys in the city, right? But every time I come to New York, and I stay in a hotel, you literally can do like this and this, and you touching both sides of that motherfucker. Oh, yeah. Their apartment is so big. <laughs> I had this too. Yeah. Their, their, apartment's their nice. apartment in the movie, are, they're so big, which is another reason why, if she's doing so well, she shouldn't have a problem with the fact that on the weekends, he likes to go out and expo just play a little poker. She's obviously a millionaire. Um, first big hand, Sean, when Teddy KGB thinks he won, how did he know Mike didn't have four nines? He didn't. We talked about this last time we talked <laughs> yeah, about it. There's no right. way to know. Sean, Just how much time have you spent on, on Poker, poker Reddit? Reddit? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I've never been on Poker Reddit, I promise. Um, but what, really quickly, what is Teddy's job? Is Teddy a mob boss or a full-time poker player in a mob den? Because like Mike walks in at the end of the movie and he's like, Let's play. And Teddy's not like, oh, I have to like organize the books for this I crime a, ring that I've I have running. a Zoom, but I can do this yeah. in 30 yeah. minutes. <laughs> He's like, I got time. Let's do it right now. Like, he doesn't have anything else to do but play with this flunky he, whose ass he already kicked three months ago. He's like a loan shark, basically, right? And probably a drug dealer. I think his club is protected by the mob, hence the connection. Yeah, That's he's my guess. connected to the outfit or he's but, high up in the outfit. But, he's, but Mike says I'm in the worst kind of trouble with the worst guy. He, he's definitely in the Russian mob, but... I think he runs that gambling room for them. That's like, that's his racket. Okay. Um, when he doubles back and plays with Worm the first time and they win, they say how much, because the girl gets 25% and they give her $300. So they made $1,200 total. So 900's left, they split it. So Mike has 450. Why is it like this giant gangster roll in his, in his pocket after that? <laughs> it's like, I saw how much money he won. He won $450. Like, he started out with 230. <laughs> Come on. Um, would, would Teddy really have to put don't touch on his Oreos? That's a really good question. He's the, he fucking runs this Russian mob poker place. He has, like, a People Mongolian like, oh, I'm bodyguard. People Teddy's Oreos. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry, Teddy. You got to remember, this is pre-COVID, you know? People yeah. were just grabbing your Oreos, grabbing your Oreos left Oreos. and right. No, real quick. What is Grandma so mad about? When, when Mike's winning. Yeah, he's when getting Mike, his money anyway. Mike, Matt, so, so Grandma is going to get paid no matter what? Yeah. Is he just like Jeffrey Dahmer? He just wants to kill people? Yeah. Like, like what is he so upset about? He just... Well, that's why they had him hurt the dog before, because they're like, this guy's evil. He hurts dogs. <laughs> <laughs> um, Worm's plan when they're trying to make $15,000 in three days to drive to Binghamton for five hours <laughs> to play a bunch of cops... 10-hour round yeah. trip? 
Wait, that might be your Cape Fear theory. It only makes sense if you yeah. know that Worm is trying to get Mike fucked. Sean, would, would Mike and Worm be a little more beaten up by 20 big They got cops? the shit kicked out of them. Like, the fact Are that you... Are you getting up after that? I don't know. Dad? <laughs> <laughs> Um, why did Mike McD tip Teddy off with the Oreo toe? Because he explains it like, I would have let him go and eat those Oreos all night, but it's a psychological trick. It's like, or just don't tell him you know he every time he's going to... tilt by letting him know, right? I, I'm asking. I think that that's the idea. Okay. Is that he really set him off by showing that he revealed his weakness and that actually worked in his favor ultimately. I don't know if that's... I don't know. I suck at poker. I love poker, but I don't know. Kaufman Levine said it was a psychological ta uh, tactic. So Petrovsky just gives Mike 10K, which then immediately gets turned into $10,000 at night, at 9 p.m., at a check cashing place with no fees. <laughs> <laughs> what are the fees to just turn a $10,000 check at 9 o'clock at night in New York check. City? A personal, a personal yeah. check. That's like 12%. Like, yeah. Let's just like, throw that out. Like, that would be a lot. Yeah. How many times have you taken out 10K? <laughs> um, I got two more. So Ed Norton hates smoking, but Worm should have been a smoker. Absolutely. I mean, he should have been cigarette smokes oozing out Why of him. Why does Ed Norton hate smoking? That just bums me out. That's what he, <laughs> the character was supposed to be a smoker and he wouldn't smoke because uh, Norton doesn't like smoking. What could smoking. have been? Um... My last nitpick, guys. I, I just think Mike McDee is murdered within five minutes of the last game. <laughs> he's like, yeah, here's your 60,000, Mike. All right, good luck. And then he's just shot in the back of the oh. head. <laughs> like, how far does he go? Does he go a block? Nah, he doesn't. I mean, the, the splatter is blood. Because Grandma's got a bloodlust. Yeah. He's filled up with testosterone and bloodlust like people told me the guys in Philly are. That's what they told me. I was trying to go off of Philly, and they say, don't do it. You'll be killed. Next category, sequel, prequel, prestige TV, all black cast or untouchable. Uh, we've been waiting for a sequel. I don't know what these fuck these guys are doing. Like, I, like Damon's in his 50s now. Make a sequel. Um, can, I, can we talk through the prequel of Worm I, in Jail? I, well, Worm in Jail, also high school Mike and Worm yeah, fixing little basketball worm. games. So like Little Worm. Little Worm. Little worm. Green light right now. Little Worm. So like 1990 Worm and Mike? Yeah. What about Worm in Jail? Absolutely. Absolutely. Any worm movie you want to do. What's the sequel for you, Van? The sequel to me is, well, the sequel to me, I've, I've pitched this a couple of before and he laughed in my face. <laughs> Get out of my face. Um, the sequel is Mike in some way gets into a situation. He has to go back and play his way through it, right? But this time, Worm is KGB. So Worm has become the big deal guy who runs the deal, and your third act is Mike playing Worm in a poker game for it all at the end of it. Does... Would Worm have a Russian accent? Yes. And the name of that movie is Remember the Last Time I Stick It In You. <laughs> <laughs> I have a prestige TV pitch. Let's hear it. Judges Night Out. <laughs> and it's the judges game... But it's like five minutes of poker in the beginning, and then one guy goes, I had a hell of a case this week. And then it's law and order for like 35 minutes. Wow. And then bang at the end, end of the hand. That's a good one. Um, I think the obvious sequel would be Mike is, becomes one of the best poker players the last 25 years, right? And then... And Worm has been in prison for 20 years. Worm gets, gets out. out. I had, when I pitched this to Cobbman and Levine a million years ago, I had Worm's brother, Gerbil, <laughs> played by uh, Ben Affleck, because we got to get Ben Affleck in this. And they come in. But then I thought of another wrinkle where it's the final table, and it's Gerbil, and it's Mike McDee, and maybe Johnny Chan, if he's still alive. And then Joe's son. Who, Joe's son? Joe's son, who's an internet <laughs> poker player who's, like, trying to spite his parents, and he's just got that squinty face. He's like, Mike, check. <laughs> and just is fucking with Mike. Who's the father? Is it Petrovsky? Yeah, it's that... Oh, my God. Other kid, yeah. Petrovsky put that yeshiva on her? That's the third yeshiva story. That's the third yeshiva yeah. story. 
Is this movie better with Wayne Jenkins, Danny Trejo, Catherine Hahn, Steve Buscemi, Michael K. Williams, Sam Jackson, J.T. Walsh, Byron Mayo, Harling Mays, or Philip Baker Hall? Let's talk out the Byron Mayo piece first. <laughs> so Petra comes over, Mike's turning around, he's like, Mike, Petra, let's let bygones be bygones. <laughs> The 88 World Series is on. Nothing's more erotic than that. But if Wayne Jenkins <laughs> spotted worm cheating, goddamn worm, I didn't know I was working with a super sharp. You're like fucking Ricky J over here. And a motherfucking ace up your sleeve tattoo. That's a little on the nose. As long as you're not distributing stolen credit cards anymore, otherwise you're gonna be losing cigarettes to white guys, brothers, and cops for a long fucking time, big boy. <laughs> Get him the fuck out of here. Uh, <laughs> I think I lost my voice on that one. Thanks again to the Home Depot. <laughs> Probably unanswerable questions. You guys could help out with this first one. Where was Teddy KGB's place located? Well, Grandma's in Chinatown. West Village. West Coney Village? Islands? Where's, where's Teddy's? Remember, it's the 90s, though, right? So where is it? Alphabet City? Alphabet City I like is that. a good, Alphabet City. good shout. Yeah. All right, we're getting a little poker technical for one minute here. Teddy KGB's last hand. The flop comes up six, seven, ten. Mike has the straight already. Teddy raises, so he's got to have something good. Did Teddy have two aces? Was that why he was so confident? Because then the last card is an ace, so he thinks he has three aces. I always thought it was pocket tens. So you think he had three tens? What do you think? Chris does no I have poker. No idea. Yeah. Fan. He had Magic the Gathering cards. Yeah, I don't like, know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he had some Pokemon. Yeah, I'm not. So Teddy says the ace did not help you, which makes me think he had two aces because then he knows there's the third ace, so Mike couldn't have had two aces. Mm -hmm. So I think he had two aces. Could be. Um, are we sure Kanish wasn't the smartest person in this movie? He's <laughs> grinding out that rent money. He owns a business. Pretty smart. Stays away. Can Knows I ask to stay away from worm? Unanswerable Kanish question. Yeah. Good friend or loan shark? Because like he's always there for Mike, kind of, but immediately after the first KGB loss, he's like, "I can stake you, and you can just give me fifty percent of your winnings, or you can drive a truck for me." But those are like your two options, and he takes them all the way up, and he just like refuses to give him money. I feel like he's always got like a price tag along with his his friendship. I think he gave him a lot of wisdom along the way too. Okay. Do, would you ever trust anybody who hangs out in a bathhouse van? <laughs> uh, probably. Look, um, <laughs> I, you know, I, I think Kanish is the example of what they don't want to become. They don't want to become, like, career. A low ceiling. Yeah, yeah. they want yeah. glory. They want all of that. They want to maximize their talent. And Kanish is kind of the safe play, like, like the movie says. So where did Worm go after Binghamton? Where did he go? Ex-convict with no money, a bloody face, no cell phone. Sounds like Boston to me. <laughs> I'm gonna say more like pro Providence. Um, so Kaufman Levine wrote this scene and they filmed it. Um, found his way to a backroom game in the Bronx. It was a game that he heard about from the guy in the beginning when he fleeced the guys for cigarettes, and the guy's like, you better hope that shit doesn't come back to haunt you, worm. Runs into that guy, and the guy chases him out, and they decided it didn't work. It was better for worm to just disappear. So cutting room floor for that guy. Um, I have Mike, one, one more. Oh, did you have, sorry, did you have another answer? Well, a lot of people wonder how Mike ended up with 60K at the end. Started out with 10, won, 20, won another 10, so he was up to 20. Went head to head and ends up with 60. And the answer is they kept like doubling up, but they didn't show it because they didn't want to get too, uh, too pokery. He only says so, table stakes at the end by the time there's a. They say the reload thing. So that's how he ends up at the, at the 60K. Um, are we sure Joe gave Petrovsky the money? 
I don't think, I know she didn't. <laughs> you know she didn't. <laughs> or is that, I know she didn't. She's up to no good. The entire movie, she was the rake. She's probably partying in Cancun, going crazy. <laughs> Go back and look, Girls Gone Wild, 2000, she's on it. Like, the, the, the whole, I, I don't think she gave him money at all. I hate girl, remember him? He wouldn't show up, and dumb motherfucker. We're taking it. Wild on Ibiza, she's there. You made, uh, you made three references to Wild on <laughs> in this conversation. Right, it brings me back to the 90s, man. Cindy Margolis. I love you, baby. I'm, you know, it's not a whole white woman thing. All right, we have one... One dorky movie question. What actor could have played all five male parts and rounders at various points of their career? So that would be uh, Teddy KGB, Mike, Worm, Grandma, and Kanish. And I asked Fantasy. I never prep Fantasy usually because I like when he panics. But I actually figured, like, ah, I'm going to get in front of people. And I'll give him an, a day of prep. What was your answer, Sean? So for a movie that could actually get made, I think Paul Newman. I think Paul Newman could do every single character. For the movie I want to see, it's Philip Seymour Hoffman. Hoffman was actually mine. Was it was what I was going to say? I had Newman as well. There's a lot of people that could have played four, but not all five. You don't I, think Jack Nicholson could pull off all of them? It's a good one. Yeah. I don't think he could have been Mike McD. Because he's, he's got that been. devious look to him at all times. It would be funny to go to Jack Nicholson and be like, you just you couldn't pull off Mike McD, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> It's been a storied career, but yeah, that's the one that got away. good enough. <laughs> uh, I call this the wheel. <laughs> <laughs> what do you have for best double feature choice with this movie? Uh, I had California Split. No, I have Fight Club. Oh. Because this movie is almost like a reverse Fight Club. That's a good like, one. It was like Norton playing the actual incarnation he's, of Tyler Durden. the Tyler Durden of poker. Yeah. Uh, personal story, when I turned 40 years old, I got a present from Bill Simmons. It was a, a poster of an incredible movie that I would recommend for this, which is 1974's The Gambler, starring James Caan, which would be an absolutely awesome double with this movie. I like it. I li I'm going with Van's idea of Cape Fear. Let's get dark. We'll go Cape Fear right in rounders. Um, the Indian Red Zawane Award for what happened the next day. When does Mike crack top 10 in the World Series of Poker? What year? Is it the next five? Never? Is he just like working as a waiter at, at the Flamingo does in two Mike years? Does Mike ever make the transition to online poker? And does Mike get wiped out like in that whole thing? You could see him getting a bracelet playing Raz or something, but I don't know about the final table. Yeah. Um, what piece of memorabilia would you want from this movie? Second to last category. Kanish's bathrobe from the, from the <laughs> Russian bathhouse. <laughs> <laughs> KGB's cookie rack, the don't touch cookie rack. Yeah. Oh, that's a good one. How about that green Cherokee sport truck that he's driving around? I like the uh, worm's leather jacket. Yeah. It's pretty great. It's, uh, it's his only wardrobe of the thing. All right, who won the movie? Can I make the case for, for Koppelman and Levine? Okay. Mm. I think it's just an incredible script. I think it's got incredible dialogue all the way through. Maybe any other set of actors don't do it as well, but it's, it's a unicorn script to me. I love, I love the way that people speak in this. I thought Brian and David. I think poker won. It just makes, it makes poker feel like the coolest thing in the world to know about, right? The whole, and in a way New York too, but like that whole scene. I couldn't think of a single person that could play Worm besides Edward Norton. Word. And so it kind of makes me feel like... No. Michael, Michael Rappaport could not have played Worm, man. Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> and Worm is the soul of the movie. I have Poker 1 and Ed Norton 2. Mm. It's weird because Ed Norton's not in the last 25 minutes of the movie, but I just, Worm is such a good character and he's so good in it, so I think I would, I would go for him. Anything else you want to hit before we go? Oh, yeah, the life lesson. Oh, well, we, we did the Tower Rounders. I gave you, like, 20 of them. <laughs> How much more do you want? Um, if we come back to New York, what movie would you want the next time? Goodfellas? We love it. Oh, Goodfellas is a good one. Um, we, were in, uh, we were in D.C., Chicago, Philly, and now here, and we had a blast this week. It's great getting out and seeing everybody and doing the pod. Thanks for the support. Great to see everybody. Thank you.